Page, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. The Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City proceedings will begin. The Board is now in session. If you're in possession of any type of electronic device, please place said device on the off or silent mode during proceedings. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, there being no preliminary matters on this morning docket. Case number one, Waterfront Hotel, 1710 Thames Street, Class BD7, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License, an application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment and outdoor table service. Please come forward. Good morning. Would you raise your right hands, please? Do you swear or affirm under the penalty of perjury that the answers that you give and the statements that you make to the court are true and accurate and true? Yes. Would you state your names, please, for the record? Uh, Mari Lisa DeSantis. Good morning. Christopher Hannon. Good morning. So this is an application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment, outdoor table service. Uh, do you want to tell us what's going on? Yes, sir. This is the second part. We were here last week under Red Star. This is the second property that was purchased from the previous owner and transferring the liquor license, keeping the same applicant's name on each liquor license. So Lisa has been on the liquor license and has been with Waterfront for, I believe, 17 years. And uh, last week the question was asked, had we reached out to associations? We took that even a step further. We have met with uh, Main Street as well as the Residents Association, sent an email to them, and the Preservation Society. Great. So you worked at the waterfront for 17 years and that, so you know Mr. knew Mr. Rayner? I, I knew of him, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everyone knew Mr. Rayner, didn't they? Right? Yes. Um, okay. Um, so uh, everything's remaining the same? Yes, sir. And the nature of the live entertainment is what? Remain the same. It's live music every night from approximately, we've moved it up a little bit, some nights starting at 8.30, mm -hmm. but generally from about 10 to close. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how much outdoor table service is there? There's six tables. Four tables. Four tables. Four tables. And that's seasonal? Yes, sir. Okay. Four tables, two seats? Four, four tables, four, four seats, seats per table. Okay. okay. Um, commissioners have questions? No further questions. So besides you, Ms. DeSantis, uh, who else handles alcohol there? The bartenders, servers. And they're all certified? Mm-hmm. Okay. I've been with you for a while? Yes. Okay. No questions. No questions. All right. Thank you, then. On the basis of the uh, materials contained in the application and the testimony received, I would vote to approve the transfer of the license with continued live entertainment and outdoor table service. I concur and vote to approve the transfer of ownership with continuation of live entertainment and outdoor table service. I, too, uh, join my colleagues and approve the transfer with continuation of live entertainment and outdoor table service. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Power Plant Live, 34 Marketplace, Class B, Beer, Wine, and Liquor Arena License, an application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment and outdoor table service. Please come forward. Raise your right hands, please, sir. <coughs> Gentlemen. <laughs> And would you identify yourselves, please? John Michael Dollar. Keith yeah. Huddlin. I didn't hear your last name, sir. Keith Huddlin. Huddlin. And are you on this license, or how are you? I am not. I'm the general counsel of the company. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so you want to tell us what's going on? Sure. Uh, the previous uh, name on the, on the license uh, left the company, so I've applied to uh, take ownership of it. Okay. So it's just a, uh, an internal Correct. transfer to re get someone off the license? Correct, sir. Okay, and everything else remains the same? Yes. And um, same people operating the alcohol there and same live entertainment and everything else? Yes. Okay. Um, commissioners have questions? No questions. Mr. Dollar, what's your experience? Uh, I work for Entertainment Consulting, which is the uh, ma provides management and consulting services for the uh, Power Plant Live District. Uh, I work as the controller for the company, so I oversee the finances and the accounting and work for it. Okay. So you're f and you're familiar with our rules and regulations? Correct. Okay. All right. Thank so you. So those who are handling alcohol in this facility are all certified? Yes. Okay. 
thank you. On the basis, then, of the materials contained in the application and the testimony received, I would vote to approve the transfer of the license with continued live entertainment and outdoor table service. I concur and vote to approve the transfer of ownership with continuation of live entertainment and outdoor table service. I uh, vote to approve and transfer the ownership with continuation of live entertainment and outdoor table service. Good luck. No, it's if it's go on. Jamie's Place, 623-25 South Luzerne Avenue, Class BD7, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License, an application to transfer ownership. Mr. Chairman, the address of 623 North Luzerne Avenue did receive notice from the Department of Housing and Community Development referencing the new zoning standards and must come into compliance or stay within compliance within two years. Thank you. Good morning. Are you representing them? Yes, good morning. Craig Schwartz on behalf of the applicants. Uh, good morning, Mr. Schwartz. Would you folks raise your right hands, please? Mr. Schwartz, you want to tell us about this? Yes, thank you. Um, pending before uh, the board is an application to transfer ownership of the liquor license for uh, JD's Smokehouse at 623 South Luzerne. Um, I have with me today the three applicants, Anthony Williams, Jamie Sutherland, and Keith Thompson. Uh, by way of efficiency, I would proffer that their testimony would be that they each sign the application pending before the board and that the information is true and accurate and remains true and accurate today. Uh, Jamie Sutherland is a 49.5% member of the LLC and authorized person to <clears throat> apply for and hold the license, uh, as is uh, Anthony Williams, also 49.5% member of the LLC and an authorized person. Uh, Ms. Sutherland and Mr. Williams relocated to Maryland in 2014 and um, had an aspiration to open a sports bar and grill. And their plan is to change the concept from a barbecue uh, place to a um, neighborhood sports bar and grill. The name would be Jamie's Place. Um, I have a copy of the menu and some other information that I was. Thank you. I like the t shirts. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we try. <laughs> uh, in the packet is uh, a picture of the uh, sign that will be used, and uh, the interior space is going to remain the same. There's not going to be any changes to that. Uh, the menu, as you'll see, is uh, geared toward uh, neighborhood bar and sports bar foods, such as egg rolls and chicken tenders and nachos and things of that nature. Uh, the hours of operation are going to remain the same. They are going to be closed on Mondays unless there's a Monday night Ravens game, uh, which would be the exception. And that is typical of what's going on in Canton right now with the other operators. Um, they have reached out to the Canton Community Association and included in the packet, and it should already be in your file, is a letter from uh, Doug Kaufman, mm -hmm. the uh, Chair of Economic Development Committee for the Association, supporting the transfer of the ownership. Um, uh, Keith is a Baltimore City resident and uh, registered voter. He's a 1% member of the LLC and an authorized person. All of the applicants have received the rules and regulations of this board, and they understand that as licensees, they're required for, uh, to comply with those rules and regulations. Each of the applicants uh, have obtained their certification, which is included in the packet and hopefully is already in the file. Uh, they do plan on having all of their um, staff who are involved in the service of alcoholic beverages also be certified. Do you know how many people you're going to have? About three, bar three to four bartenders and um, two kitchen. Okay. Tell them just be careful about carding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what? They carding. 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 Oh, yeah, we do. We're, we're, we're diligent on that part. Okay. Uh, is there any, it, it, the letter from the community association mentions an MOU? Uh, I believe he was saying if, the, if you do seek live entertainment in the future, okay. is that correct? Mm -hmm. Then they, they would condition that upon an appropriate MOU. All and right. That's not part of the current RAPL application. Correct. Not part. Correct. Not at this time. 
Anything further? No, not from yes, me, unless there's any other questions. I don't think so. Okay, thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the application, proffers from council, testimony received in the exhibits, which will be received in evidence, including the letter uh, of no op uh, opposition from the um, Economic Development Committee of the Canton Community Association, I would vote to approve the transfer of ownership. Thank you. I concur for the uh, same reasons and vote to approve the transfer of ownership. I, too, join my colleagues and vote to approve the transfer of ownership. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. much. Life Clause for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Letter of Support from Canton Community Association, dated 11-8-2019. Applicant Exhibit 1, Business Plan. <clears throat> Lumbumba's Liquor and Grocery, 459 Anglesey Street, Class A, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License, an application to transfer ownership. Please come forward. And I'm not going to sing La Bamba. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, I, I may have to find out. Mr. If you remember, Mr. Sue was here, and we had the fire, and you gave him the extension. He uh, was recovering from a stroke, and I just want to find out whether or not there's a problem. Um, and if uh, not, I'll call him. I'm going to try and call him now. We'll but I got a couple other cases. If not, I can ask we'll for a continuance. And call the next one. Okay. Okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. Moving to case number five, Nortendo Bar, 3311 Annapolis Road, Class BD7, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License, an application to transfer ownership. Please come forward. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, Sean Harvey, I represent the applicants who aren't here yet. I spoke to them about a half hour ago on the phone, and they were on their way. So if you could just kick us down to... Uh, All right, we'll hold you as well. Spots. I appreciate it. Thank you. They must be looking at that clock. <laughs> Tusker Lounge. Are they here? <laughs> 5302. Frankfurt Avenue, Class BD7, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License, an application to transfer ownership. Please come forward. Abraham Hurdle on behalf of 53 Greystone LLC, trading as the Tusker Lounge. Good uh, morning. Would all those going to testify raise their right hands, please? Yes. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, 53 Greystone LLC is this is an in-location transfer of a BD7. Uh, my understanding is in the file there are two letters of, I wouldn't call them opposition, but perhaps concern. Um, one is from the Frankfurt Improvement Association, one is from Harbell, which is kind of an overarching community group that assists other community groups in the area. My clients did meet with the Frankfurt Improvement Association on November 5th. Um, and since then, my understanding is Ms. Jackson, who was the person who runs that organization, has spoken to uh, the Harbell organization, which is here today, um, in regards to how to proceed forward, how she would like to proceed forward. And I think what we're going to try to do is uh, make the approval, assuming you guys do, um, contingent upon the MOU being added to the file and the license being restricted by that MOU. Um, Mr. Achaya, um, who is a 49.5% owner, has 10 years' experience in the liquor business. Uh, Mr. Bista, um, is, he's got 10 years' experience in the retail industry. Uh, both of those gentlemen actually work at a pharmacy in the neighborhood and have been for about 10 to 15 years. So they're familiar with the community, um, which is one of the things that I think benefits them when they did deal with the Frankfurt Improvement Association. Mr. Boyd has very little experience in the industry but is excited to learn. All three of the gentlemen will be TAM certified. They plan to hire between two and three full-time employees, um, and they will also be TAM certified prior to opening. So anybody handling liquor, anybody serving or selling will be alcohol awareness certified uh, prior to the establishment opening. What was the nature of the, um, the issues that they wanted addressed in the MOU? It's my understanding that Ms. Jackson doesn't want a liquor store or a tavern there. But that's going to be a difficult one to resolve. Correct. Correct. So, m m if I may. Mr. Hilliard, would you identify yourself? Sure. Um, Mike Hilliard, I'm the Community Services Director at Harbell. My conversation with Ms. Jackson was that the neighbors don't want a bar at that location. And I expressed my opinion that 
that would not force the bar to the board to remove a liquor license from that location and the likelihood of that license being removed is improbable um so what she said is she wanted to enter into an mou um my discussions with mr hurdle before and was that the chairman probably would not want to postpone the hearing so the community could negotiate an mou so we kind of came up with the suggestion that if you approve the license um <clears throat> you approve it with the stipulation that the licensees enter into an mou with the community that is then incorporated into the license well, what are the terms proposed terms basically what i sent miss jackson was and you've probably seen it before it's the minimum expectations one that was done years ago by the community law center the only thing in it that is not required by law um, is that um, you know either by baltimore city code or or by or by liquor license or by your rules and regulations is that they provide each other contact information so that if there's an issue they can talk to each other but it's you know it's generally lighting cleaning the area that type of thing and we're very much agreeable to that i'd also like my clients to um as a potential additional item to actively participate in the community meeting um, i'm not certain that they're going to be there at every community meeting but i would like them to take an active part in those meetings i think that helps establish the communication and prevents miscommunications with the neighborhood association okay um the establishment that is there now has, is is it open or closed it's open and operating is my understanding okay. oh, okay. and has it been a problem not to my knowledge mr chair <clears throat> i i mean i'm looking at the um at the violation sheet and it looks like the exist i mean i can i think i can understand miss jackson's concerns because it appears that there have been a number of violations if i'm reading this correctly uh over the course of the you know time that the license has been um been live so uh okay so it does there is a, my point is there is a history mm -hmm. we'll work diligently to make sure everyone's alcohol awareness certified and i'll spend a little extra time making sure they understand the ramifications that the board would have if they continue to have the issues that have plagued this location in the past so the right. licensees are willing to have any uh, transfer conditioned upon uh, the terms of a prospective mou correct okay let, let me ask you, what's the harm other than obvious time and to postpone this so that the parties can sit down and actually hammer out an mou is what's I, I the harm the, the terms of the MOU that Mr. Hilliard has explained to me are, from my understanding, they're the standard terms. Um, I believe they are, I wouldn't say they're wildly restrictive, but they certainly do bind the licensee aggressively and certainly tie them to the community in a way that most establishments are not. That's the kind of MOU we're looking to sign. Um, there's never been a discussion of restriction of hours and things of that nature. And at this time, I don't know that we would agree to that. I'm not sure my clients are looking to be open till 2 a.m. every single day, but they certainly want the opportunity. Um, given the way I think this agreement would work and the board's approval, I think it would work to push both sides, both the neighborhood association and the client to come to a resolution quickly, as opposed to some sort of situation where if we postpone it two weeks, the holidays, six weeks, it just kind of gets jumbled at certainly this time of year. I, that is a that's a fair response I guess my only concern is whether we have the authority to do well, that they here. wouldn't pick it up until right until right, right. okay so here's what I, I would do does anybody have anything further no nothing further. nothing further. all right on the basis then the materials contain the application the exhibits received including the letter from Harbell um, and the testimony received this morning um, I'd vote to approve the transfer of the ownership of this license um, and when if and when a memorandum of understanding with the community association is filed with the board uh, that any terms contained therein would be binding on the license as a condition of the license to the extent they're enforceable by law and so they wouldn't be able to pick up the license until that has been um or i'm not saying that because okay. i don't know if they're ever going to execute an mou <laughs> all right i uh
I too uh, approve the transfer of ownership, vote to approve the transfer of ownership, and um, hopefully the parties can agree to a memorandum of understanding, and that would be a condition upon the license. So I would vote to approve the transfer conditioned on the parties entering into an MOU uh, to the extent that they're enforceable by law. Okay, good luck. Thank you, Commissioner. You'll be excused. Thank you. I call it for the record. Board is a bit one. Letter from Harbell, <laughs> dated 11 8 2019. Waverly Brewing Company, 1625 Union Avenue, Suite C, Class D, beer license. Request to add outdoor table service. Please come forward. Raise your hand, right hand, sir, please. You're William Stevenson, sir? I oh, am. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you're the existing licensee on uh, the Waverly Brewing Company? Yes. And you want to add what? Um, outdoor table service. Uh, how much, I guess, is what I meant. I'm sorry, how much? How, how many tables and, that, and oh, where? Oh, well, and we the have a, we're, not, we're not trying to add table service on the sidewalk. We have um, an enclosed area that's, that's our property. And we've been open for four years, November 4th, without violations. And it just came to our attention that that was a necessary thing for us to have because it was just, we, it, we thought that we had the ability to have people in our yard on our patio. Okay. And how large is the days. patio? Maybe, maybe a thousand square feet, 1100 square feet. Okay. So, and you're able to serve about how many people out there? Uh, it's. We don't, we're not even going, we don't even have service in the true sense of the word. We just, we just want people to be able to enjoy our patio and the four or five picnic tables we have out there. So they bring the beer outside. Yeah. You don't have a bar outside. No. Yeah. Okay. We can't, we don't have, uh, like I said, we don't have table service per se. Okay. And so when we figured out that this was necessary, I, my uh, gracious, financial and spiritual advisor, Mr. Lucatelli, got on the case and <laughs> he told me I had to mention his name. And filed the application. <laughs> and he filed the application the next day. He's our advisor, too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, commissioners have questions? No questions. All right. Uh, thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the application and testimony received, uh, I would vote to approve the addition of the outdoor table service to the license so that they can uh, use the patio tables. I concur for the same reasons and vote to approve or vote to approve the addition of outdoor table service. I vote to approve the addition of outdoor table service. Good luck. Thanks very oh, much. Oh, it's it's Stevenson. All right. Tyna Nog, Harbor Place, 201 East Pratt Street, Class B, beer, wine, and liquor license. Request to expand the premises of the Karen Outdoor Table Service area. Please come forward. Good morning. Good morning. Identify yourself for the record. Leanne Shrek and Goss with Royston, Mullen, McLean, and Reed here on behalf of Tier and all. Good morning. Would you raise your right hand, sir, please? Sure. Yes. Would you please state your name and address for the record? Sure. Maurice Collins, 117 Blondie Road, Pearl River, New York. Mr. Collins, you are one of the licensees for this location, correct? Yes. We are here to request the addition of 40 addition, forty seats to the existing patio for Tiernanog. Um, there are seats that are being taken over from the former Latosca. They're being added to the existing patio. There are currently 84 seats on the existing patio. We have approval from the health department and the fire department and the landlord to add the additional 40 seats. Um, the entire patio is on the second floor of the Pratt Street Pavilion. No easy access to the Harbor Walkway. Ingress and egress is through the restaurant as it is currently. There will be no bar outside, just existing table service. All the staff at Tiernanog is TIPS trained. Anybody who touches alcohol is TIPS trained. We actually have a certified TIPS trainer on staff. Okay. Um, and I see you have Mr. Shea on the license now. That is correct. Junior. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, commissioners have questions? No questions. So there's no change in your operation, it's just, okay, no questions. Extra seats. 
to enjoy the Pat Harbor view. All right. Okay, thank you. On the basis of the materials contained in the application, the proffers from council and testimony received, I'd vote to approve the request to expand the premises of the current outdoor table service area. I concur for the same reasons and vote to approve the request to expand the premises of the current outdoor table service area. I join my colleagues in approving the expansion of the premises uh, for the current outdoor table service. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. No exhibits. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Young's Place, he was two two zero zero, East Fayette Street, Class BD seven, beer, wine, and liquor license. Request for a hardship extension under Article twelve two two zero two. Please come forward. Uh, for the record, Melvin J. Kanansky representing the request for the um, hardship. Um, this was a gentleman with me was a contract purchaser on the license. Uh, they're trying to place, uh, last was open on um, April the 30th. Um, he's trying to find, uh, he thought he could move that license to Eastern Avenue where he has another location, but it's a restricted precinct, so he's gonna need a time for the hardship to be able to find another place for the license. And what's the gentleman's name? Gerald Cole. He's not. He's a contract purchaser for the. For oh, I see. And your last name, Cole? Cole, C O L E. Okay, so I There's thought you said. a place you know you might be interested. It's where the old Hausers was. Uh -huh. They redid that. He has a, a little beer and wine place there. One she shop, very nice. Okay, um, and so he's looking for someone to, and so he's requesting a 180 day extension to do that. Yeah, well, he might at least that from the date um, the last store operated. They were last operated on. Um, April 30th, so he we need um, the first 108 days is going by, so he, he'll need that extension. Okay. Commissioners have questions? No questions. No questions. Right. Thank you. On the basis then of Mr. Kadensky's letter to the board of October 23, 2019, his proffers this morning, um, I would vote to approve 180 day hardship extension. I concur for the same reasons and vote to approve 180 day hardship extension. I vote to approve 180 day hardship extension. Good luck. Uh, on that other matter, Mr. Sue, I, I, I probably have to ask for a continuance because we cannot, I can't get an Let's answer. Let's recall it for a second, okay, and then we'll do it. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Page, you want to recall the other case? Do you have any It's uh, La Bamba. La Bamba on Angle C. Angle C. No, as if it's for the current case. Okay, La Bamba's Liquor and Grocery, 459 Angle C Street, Class A, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License, Application to Transfer Ownership. Uh, once again, uh, Melvin J. Kadensky on behalf from Mr. Sue. I have not been able to locate him. I think the last time we were here, he was indicating that he was recovering from a, a stroke. And uh, then I asked my office, we couldn't get him. I asked if he may continue until I could find out whether there's a problem with his health or not. Okay. Can we set it back in, Mr. Page? Yes, sometime in January, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think that'll be fine. Cause th if you remember, they had a fire, they're, they're rebuilding the place anyhow. Okay. The case will be continued. Thank you. <laughs> Federal Liquors, 1537 North Washington Street, Class A, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License. Request for hardship extension under Article 12-2202. Please come forward. Once again, Melvin J. Kanetsky uh, representing the contract purchaser, Mr. Cool, who was buying the, the license for his mom, trying to find a place to, to move the license to, and they were not uh, successful in doing that. So. Um, we would request that the a board to grant the 180 day extension. Same situation as the prior case. Correct. Okay. Commissioners have questions? No. No questions. All right. Thank you. On the basis of Mr. Kadensky's letter of October 23, 2019, his proffers this morning and the other materials containing the application, I would vote to approve a 180 day hardship extension. I concur for the same reasons and vote to approve 180 day hardship extension. I vote to approve 180 day hardship extension. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A1 Convenience Store, 1625 Wilkins Avenue, Class A, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License. A request for hardship extension under Article 12 2202. Please come forward. Council. Good afternoon, Mr. Commissioner. For the record, Carrie Maslin, on behalf of the applicants. 
This is a request for a hardship extension. This is a store which is affected by the um, change in zoning. Uh, he is um, basically shut down his operations at the end of June because of the, the memo given by the zoning board. And he is contracted to sell the, um, the license to the gentleman that's in the back now. We'd like a 180 day extension so we can find a place to relocate the, uh, the business or in the alternative, perhaps uh, reopen it. Mr. Previs has a, um, a case pending, uh, which has been heard by the zoning people. My client believe that they are a participant in that, uh, that, uh, that case. And if that is successful, perhaps this license may be able to remain and reopen at this location, pending the outcome of the zoning. So we'd like 180 days to try to figure out where where we can go with this license. Commissioners have questions? No questions. No questions. All right, thank you. On the basis then of uh, Mr. Maslin's letter to the Board of October 17, 2019, as proper this morning, I'd vote to grant a 180-day hardship extension. I agree and vote to approve a 180-day hardship extension. I, too, would vote to approve a 180-day hardship extension. Good luck. Good luck. Oh, wait, just, just point of clarification. It's 180 days from today. Uh, you have to clarify with Mr. Page because he's the expert on that. All right. From the date of closure. <laughs> from the date of closure. Correct. Which Last day of operation. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Harvey, are your clients ready to proceed? Sure. Mr. Chairman, may I? Yes, please recall. Recalling case number five on the docket, Norteno Bar 3311, Annapolis Road, Class BD7, Beer, Wine, and Liquor License, an application to transfer ownership. Please come forward. Once again, uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman and, and uh, Commissioners. I'm Sean Harvey. I represent the applicant to my right, Mr. Carrillo. Uh, to his right is his daughter, uh, Isabella Carrillo. She is here to translate for uh, my client. I'd also like to advise the uh, board that there is another applicant. Uh, his name is uh, Bruce Gavin. He's a 5% shareholder in the corporation, uh, Nor Norteno Bar, Inc. Uh, he just had a, a, um, an eye operation. He's recovering from that. He could not attend. But I would like to advise you that he is a current licensee on, on this license. If you wanted him to um, be present, I mean, would have to postpone it. But I, he's he's uh, staying on the license. Yes, right? he's staying on the license. Right, so his interests are not affected. That's correct. Um, so, uh, would you both raise your right hands, please? And we'll need to swear in Mr. Carrillo and his daughter as a translator. What will the language be? Uh, Spanish. Okay, thank you. If I may proffer, um, Mr. Creo is the uh, president, treasurer, and um, Mr. Uh, Gavin is the secretary of uh, Norteno uh, Inc. Norteno Bar Inc. Uh, the plans are: this, well, first of all, this this um, uh, license has been here for decades. It's been basically a bar. Mr. Creo intends to turn it into a sort of a bar a restaurant with uh, Tex-Mex uh, food. Um, the um, uh, app the um, contract that they, he entered into with um, Ms. Wenth, who's the current uh, majority licensee, uh, is a uh, purchase of uh, $70,000 for the license. The place is now closed, incidentally. We had a um, hearing recently uh, for a 180-day hardship extension. Um, the, the deal is for $10,000 down, which has already been paid, $15,000 at settlement, then there'll be a note for $45,000 over the course of a year. Um, Mr. Creo has al already entered into a, a lease agreement with Management Inc., the owner of the, uh, the premises. That was for uh, three years, uh, beginning uh, October 1st, actually, and, and ending on September 30th, 2022. Um, that'll be about $3,500 a, a month in rent. Um, Mr. Creo is going to be the full-time operator. He expects to have 
three to four employees. He understands that if he has employees like this, uh, state law requires that he uh, maintain workers' compensation insurance, and he's going to have that. Um, he has not been uh, certified alcohol awareness training yet, but he intends uh, to do that and also have anyone who handles alcohol in the uh, premises TAM certified as well. That would be bartenders and, and waiters, et cetera. He also intends to hire a manager and, and naturally um, have that manager register with, with the board. Does he know when he might be open? Well, we're looking at in the next few weeks, if, if the board approves, um, we've already uh, had some inspections through there, and um, it's just a question, I guess, of getting the uh, uh, Maryland sales tax license and that sort of thing, um, and of course the trader's license. Um, so will the alcohol uh, serve be any different than it has been? It's just that they're adding food now, right? Yeah, th th there's always been a kitchen in this place, but uh, Pauline Wendt, who was running it, uh, never really used it. It's just basically been a bar, but now he wants to turn it into a restaurant, which I think is good. There are no other uh, Tex-Mex uh, um, restaurants in the area, and there's actually very few other licensees in the area as well. Um, he intends to keep the place well lit and uh, clear of debris. There's n really no parking problem because it's on the, the, the place is situated kind of in a mall type area, so there's a lot of parking. Won't be any problem with traffic and so. Did you tell us what Mr. Carrillo did before this? Uh, he worked in a construction company with him and his brother. Okay, um, so this is new business for him? Yes. yes. Okay, Brand he new. understands that it's not an easy business. Yes, he does. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, uh, and we, uh, just so, and I'm sure you will, uh, if you have not already told them, uh, you know, it's our responsibility to make sure he does it in accordance with our rules and regulations. If he doesn't do that, he'll have to come back in, and we can suspend his license, fine him, sanction him, close him. Um, so he needs to pay attention to all those things. I just wanted the board to also be aware that he told me that he intends to have security at, at, at this place. So um, that would be a great help in keeping yes. uh, the and, riffraff. Uh, Mr. Carroll's uh, first name is? Isabel. Isabel, okay. Two L's. Yeah. Okay. Anything further? Nothing further. All right, thank you. On the base of the materials contained in the application, proffers from counsel and testimony received, I would vote to approve the transfer of the license. I concur for the same reasons and vote to approve the transfer of license. I vote to approve the transfer. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Noah Zippitz. Mr. Page, without the uh, assistance, the able assistance of Mr. Akras, have we completed the morning docket? <laughs> <laughs> That's correct, in Mr. Chairman. Fashion. The board is in recess until Thursday, November the 21st, 2019, 11 a.m. We are adjourned.